So for those that aren't aware, what we work with is a, a teaching um, created by David based off of teachings from the emissaries through the generations. It's uh, called, it's a creative process. It's called the sun cross. And so it's a movement of the creative process through the human capacities. And it's a movement that is, I believe, born of two different things and a combination of the both. Like we each have a spiritual dimension to ourselves. They call it a, a higher self, a master self, an inner presence, the wonderful one within, whatever it is. And it works with us. It's wanting to birth through us into creation and also guide us on some evolutionary path that we're on of learning and growth and evolving into better and better versions of ourselves, more aligned with truth and love. And so what happens is it moves through our capacities in this wonderful way where something moves through from the spirit into our heart realm. And it's like a download of love that we call blessing. And this blessing, this radiation of love comes as a carrier wave of love. You might have heard that term, the carrier wave of love. What that love is carrying is divine consciousness in the form of energy and information, giving us some of this higher desire and knowing. And as that comes into the love, into the heart, and the heart opens and responds back with love, it receives some of this. And it holds it and processes it. And then it's meant to move over into the mind, to the mind for understanding. In order for that to happen, the heart has to be open to let itself be willing to be seen by the mind. And then there's this exchange of understanding. And when the mind has understood, now it has the job of telling this part of ourselves, this physical part that actually is in the world is able to move things and move energy physically. It gives us some idea of what it understands in the form of direction. Do this, go here, create, bring forth this way. And if we are diligent in following through and receiving the direction, then we create something in the world. We're moving, we're creating. But just because we're creating something in the world doesn't necessarily mean it's the fullness of what spirit was downloading into us for the creation it wants us to birth or the growth it wants us to move through. It's kind of like a telephone game. Has ever played the telephone game? I tell you, you tell you, you tell you, and then it comes back to me and it may or may not be the same thing <laughs> that I started out with. And there's a lot of things going on in the physical world, lots of distractions, lots of um, exits and side routes, things we could uh, lose our focus with. So we got to go back to the source that first gave us this download. And if we are loyal to that source, giving our attention, uh, resting in a space of orientation instead of getting lost, and all the things that come up to us from the world, then we're empowered once again. And from that empowerment, then spirit moves in a new direction into our minds, inspiring us with how we can take what we've created and move it into the next level, into a greater, more full experience of what's desiring to be born. And this is in the mind. So as we begin to imagine that reality, imagine this new possibility. Then we have the opportunity to move into the unknown. And this is where courage comes into play. Because moving into the unknown is a little scary. The reason it's unknown is because we haven't done it yet. And so there's something that happens inside the heart realm, where we, where we keep our love, but also where there's fear that comes up. And so we need this heart to encourage us to move forward into the unknown. And yet also, 
as we move, there's something that comes up called shame. Something that lives in almost every heart. Where we at some point bought into from some outside source and then carried and continued to repeat to ourselves that our identity of who we are is lower than the truth of love as the being of love that we are, which is the truth. We believe that. And that keeps us from stepping into the unknown. And so it's coming up. It wants to be seen so that we can transcend it, so that we can recognize the lies we've been believing and repeating. And we can bring the encouragement of the heart that says you can do it. Try the new, step in, be strong. And in that moment, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity either to fall back into believing the shame about ourselves. And then we fall back into the beginning of the cycle. Or we can have the courage to know the reality of who we are. To know that we are held by a bigger picture. And take that step forward into the unknown. And have a new experience. And when we do that, we actually find that grace. That we are held within a larger picture. We are held in a space of love. There are invisible forces guiding and pulling things together in our life for our greater experience of knowing ourselves in that truth of love. Shame hurts. And it's not real. It's a bunch of lies that we believed in. But if we can meet it, face it, and actually walk through it, then we're completing cycles of evolution within ourselves. We are evolving into greater versions and we're making a difference in our worlds. If we have the courage to move through. And sometimes we don't. Sometimes we fall back. Start over the process again. And that's okay. Because I don't care how many times it takes you to get to that line and be willing to step over it, the fact that you stepped over it means that you can do it again and you can do it again. And that's the journey of a human life coming into grace. Thank you.